Hello and you're very welcome to the RAG here in Tipperary, the home of Camogie in Tipperary. We're about 10 minutes outside Turles. My name is Paul Jenkins and you're joining us for the 2023 very National Camogie League Division 2B final replay. There's a mouthful for you. It's Cork against Kilkenny. Last Saturday met in Clonmel. That one finished 1-7 apiece. So both teams know each other pretty well, of course. They met earlier on in the league stages. That one went the way of Cork. It was 7 points to 2 9 on that occasion so it was a little bit closer last Saturday of course 1-7 to 1-7 is how that finished before we go any further we'll take a look at the two teams the Cork team shows no changes from the programme that went out during the week and from the team that played or was due to play last week anyway so in goals we have Stephanie de Boussang full back line Ashling Maloney Neve O'Leary and Emma Flanagan half back line is Leanne O'Sullivan Maeve Ring and Laura Doyle their midfielder sees Avril Cashman and player of the match from last week Rachel Harty the team captain make up the midfield Rose Murphy, Lucy Allen and Clean O'Leary are their half forwards and then their inside line is Clean O'Dooley, Clean O'Callaghan and Lauren Homan. Kilkenny have two changes from the team that was written into the programme there a couple of days ago. In goals, they have Kleena Murphy. Full back line is Neve Leahy, Jenny O'Dee, and Jane Cass. Their half back line is Katie Byrne, Roisin Phelan, and team captain Hannah Scott. Their midfield line looks like Laura Green and Mairead Kennedy. And moving into their forwards, we have Danielle Quigley, who got the goal the last day out in the opening seconds of that game for Kilkenny. The first change we see there, number 11, Aoife Cantwell, is replaced by number 17, Ellen Gunner. She's in there at half forward. Number 12 then sees Daniel Morrissey. And then we've got the inside line again. Claire Doheny is number 13. Caroline Kennedy is at full forward. And the other change there, which did take place last week as well, number 19, Emma Mulhall, starts in place of number 15, Emer Leahy. So they're the two 15s as we have them. We're expecting to get going here any minute. Mike Ryan is today's match referee from Tipperary, so he didn't have far to travel here for today's game. Last week, if you didn't see it, it got off to an absolute belter of a start. Kilkenny came flying out of the traps. They were 1-1 up inside the first two or three minutes. And Cork slowly eked their way back into it. They got an all-important goal there just before half-time, which really seemed to change the game. That one coming from Kleena Dooley after a slight mistake, maybe, in the Kilkenny defence. So both teams, as we said, know each other well. They know they have championship coming as well. Not so long. So Dublin they play in the first round of the championship from a Kilkenny perspective from a Cork perspective then of course they go in and play Kildare both those games take place on the 27th and 28th of May so they have one eye on that as well as trying to win a national trophy here today of course about two or three minutes from throwing both teams have been out in the field for the last maybe 10 or 15 minutes here the rain is coming and going but we're expecting a bit of a downpour over the next couple of hours or so so wherever you're watching I hope you're nice and warm and dry because people here today are not that lucky unfortunately now there is a bit of a stand here in the rag which is great but our poor cameraman so have a bit of have a bit of uh, sympathy for our poor cameraman Dave who's out there in the elements and he's going to do his very best to bring you top quality coverage here from the rag so we spoke to Seamus Kelly before the match he seemed pretty confident of Kilkenny coming into this one the man of course the Carlo man who was involved Mount Leinster Rangers man his first year in charge former minor manager and was the intermediate coach of course back in 2015 and only last year he guided DCU to the Ashburn Cup. That was back in 2022. From a Cork perspective, Trevor Coleman, an appearing man, it's his second year in charge. And, of course, he brought Cork all the way to the intermediate final last year where they were beaten. So now we're going to pause for the national anthem. Ready to go here in the rag. Both teams are out and the rain looks like it may have stopped for a few minutes anyway, which will hopefully add to the quality of Camogie we're going to see in front of us here over the next couple of hours or so. 
doesn't seem to be any late changes so just the two from the programme there number 19 Emma Wall Hall in a corner forward for Kilkenny and number 17 Ellen Gunner in a centre forward also for Kilkenny the Cork team playing as selected a 1-15 to there Clean O'Callan didn't start last week she is starting there at full forward she got four goals against Kildare in the championship last year so she's a woman who knows where the net is and it looks like we might be ready to go here scoreboard over in the far side of the field reads 0 0 0 0 and we mentioned it last week and it's worth mentioning again the Kilkenny Camogie team the black square they have in their back of the jersey from a spectator point of view is a huge initiative and it's really good to see something the men should really take on board as well and looks like we're up and going here in the rag the clock is on the scoreboard looks like it's working so that is a huge advantage to us here on the ground as well as Kilkenny come on to attack the ball is dropped but Cork have picked it up and now they work it out work it out to the side as far as O'Leary again O'Leary who was impressive the last day out she was on the freeze and finished up with four in total three from freeze she plays that out to the other side as far as home and now she plays an intelligent ball inside in towards the centre it's bouncing it looks like O'Callan is out in front good defending in there from a Kilkenny perspective and it comes out not very far and it looks like Cork have managed to turn this over they might get a shot off there through Dooley Dooley has a bit of vision there plays it out into plenty of space here on the near side of the field and Cork have a chance it looks like it might be Lucy Allen to pick that one up Lucy has it she goes back inside the referee falls down but the play continues the crowd here enjoy that one Kilkenny now have a chance to pick up the ball maybe that bit of confusion but good work there by O'Callan from Cork doesn't let her get it out too easy and she's worked it out there outside as far as Quigley. Quigley got the goal for Kilkenny in the opening seconds last week. But she's lost possession on this occasion. And Corker working hard, coming in two and three players, working hard to try and win that. Looks like Rachel Harty again, showing real dogged determination in her work rate, which we saw last week. And driving out this is Rose Murphy. There's a few shouts for steps here from the crowd. The referee ignores them, though, and he's given a free in, a free in to Cork and a chance to get the opening score of the day for them. They changed their free takers a few times the last day out. Who's going to take them today? It looks like they're going to start with Lauren Holman. Anyway, she is going to start. She got a point the last day out also from a free. And can she get things up and going here today? She's just inside the 45. She's relatively central. There isn't really a breeze to speak of. So that shouldn't be an issue. Distance shouldn't be an issue. The accuracy is the thing we'll need to concentrate on from her perspective. So she bends, she lifts, she strikes that one. It looks to be pretty accurate. It's gone between the posts. Is that the opening score today? Yes, it is. Pullman gets us up and going here in the rag. And it's Cork who take the lead. The opposite of what happened last Saturday. So it's now Tina Murphy from Kilmacow with the ball in her hands. Looking around. This looks like it's something they may have practiced. She actually decides to go straight down the middle. That's dropping right in the 65 lines. Batted down there by Rachel Hartley. Running on to that now is Rose Murphy. Rose Murphy is a great engine on her, but she doesn't manage to get clean possession. And that's gone out over the line. A line ball here in front of our camera position. The Kilkenny are looking to take relatively quickly anyway. Again, as I say, thankfully the rain seems to have eased off to some extent. Hopefully it stays away. That's knocked up the line. They're trying to play it out to Gunner. Gunner gets it eventually. Gunner has it in a bit of space. Looks across the field. Lovely diagonal ball inside. Trying to play it in as far as Kennedy. Kennedy's been well marshaled inside there. Now comes the goalie there. It looks like it's Debussang who was on to that. Very quick to react and plays that up the line. Plays it up there as far as Doyle. Doyle goes down on that. She has a bit of space and she has a bit of space to run into, which is a great thing from her point of view. She runs into that. She must have made 30, 40 yards. Is she going to look over the post? She is. Has she got the accuracy? Has she got the distance? Going to drop short. Not an easy one for Clean and Murphy and the Kilkenny goal to deal with. It's a slippery top surface, as we mentioned. It's been raining on and off for the last few hours. Not an easy one for the goalie, but she did really well there. As did Lucy Allen there in front of us. Lucy Allen went to ground. Up. The referee says to play on as Green picks that up for Kilkenny. She feeds it. Oh, brilliant interception there by Holman. She started really well, scored from a free a minute ago. A good interception there, and now she gets it back again. And now she's going forward. Now she's looking up the post. No intelligent ball inside as far as Harty. Harty. Oh, brave block there coming in from Hannah Scott. The Kilkenny captain stopped that going any further forward. And Kilkenny are holding on to this one now because that did look like a score for Carr but Hannah Scott made sure that didn't happen now there's a chance for O'Sullivan to pick this one up she goes back outside back as far as Maeve Ring now Maeve Ring plenty of space over there for Carr to just build from here over as far as Doyle now Doyle again they're getting a lot of use down that far side of the field and now goes back as far as Holman she has acres of time and space she looks up has she split the post she hasn't on this occasion it's gone to the left and wide and that's the opening wide of the game and it goes Cork's way Three and a half minutes gone here in the rag. It's one point to no score in favour of Cork. As Lena Murphy down there for Kilkenny is starting to feel the heat. She's going to take off her jumper. Within the first four minutes, she's been called into the action a few times, I suppose. So she has warmed up well and truly. And now she's going to go over and possibly change her hurley, possibly. Anyway, she's going to puck out the ball. She's looking around. There's a, few mo- there's a bit of movement there in that Kilkenny midfield. Both Green and Kennedy both made moves for that one. 
it's going to go to neither of them that bounces a few times is it going to stay in play yes it is it's picked up over there by Maloney of Cork Maloney feeds that inside back as far as Doyle Doyle goes onto this again good hand pass outside there is a bit of space there as that one's fed inside again it's Holman who's getting loads and loads of balls up far in this game and she has time to run into the space she's looking around good stick pass outside as far as O'Leary O'Leary that one's slightly overhead but she pulls it intelligently inside now Cork have space can they convert over from here is this one in as far as Dooley Dooley got the goal the last day she's been well defended in there though it looked like that was Roisin Feeling who pushed her out and that's the second wide of the game good work from Cork but equally good work from Kilkenny it was really good defending make sure that shot just didn't come off and eventually was forced to the left and wide so it's going to be kicked pucked out now by Cleena Murphy again who has been busy in this early stages that one's going to drop it's batted down who's going to get onto it now it looks like Cork again have won all the 50-50s in the opening couple of minutes of this one but just as I say that Kilkenny who come away with it through Emmett Hall Emmett Hall feeds it up and you can hear the crowd here there's definitely a more vocal Kilkenny attendance here today that's turned that struck and has it oh, it's just gone to the right and wide but more encouraging from Kilkenny point of view they don't need that much time they can just convert that on a sixpence and that was a good effort there by Emmett Hall but it just went to the right and wide and it remains one point to no score. Five minutes gone here. Lucy Allen read that really well. That was a well-rehearsed move as she picks that one up. Plays it across the field. Not the most accurate pass in the world. Kilkenny are quickest to react onto that. They're onto that. Played it back down to where it came from. Quick turn and strike inside. So looking to get it into Kil- in as far as Kennedy. That one just had too much on it. It was easily picked up there by Boosang in the Cork goals. And she feeds out as far as Maloney again. Maloney gets an attack going for Cork down the far side of the field. Up as far as their Talis player now. Lucy Allen again. Lucy Allen plays that across the field. Played in the Cork County final with Sarsfields. Lost that one. But she's here today and she's trying to become a winner here in this national final as Harty plays that down into the corner. You have to fancy the Cork player at this station, but really good running back there by Cash. She got onto that. She's won the ball and she rode the tackle. Came out with that past two players. Played it up the line as far as Green now. Laura Green again has passed two players. Good stick work. Duck coming in there by Rose Murphy. Not letting that go out. And we're going to restart now with a line ball. Good work there from both sets of players there. Hurley came in there from Rose Murphy. Just stopped that ball coming out. Of the Again, from a Kilkenny's perspective, and it's going to be their line ball now through Jane Cash. She goes up the line. Not a huge amount of distance on that. Bit of pushing and shoving there. The hurley goes to the ground. The referee just wants to see this, I suppose, develop. And it has developed there up as far as Leahy now. Now Leahy has it. She's driving past two or three car players. Throws it in front of herself to give it a bit of fit. And there's a clash of the ass that you hear. And Kilkenny look like they've come out with that. Again, there's no inch being asked for or given in this game. Both players throwing themselves into it. The referee says the chop down there. And it's going to be a free... We can hear the Kilkenny management. I'm not sure is that coming through here on the mics we have. But the Kilkenny management there getting pretty vocal there. It looks like it was Tommy Wall just encouraging his players to keep into it. And it's going to be a free in now. Free in to Daniel Morrissey. She got four in the drawn game. Three of them from place ball. She's standing over this one just outside the 65. Puts that one high into the sky. But it's going to drop short. But there could be danger there. But it's battered out again. Quickest react. Looks like it's going to be Gunner. Gunner has it. She goes down that One hand in the hurley. She does well as she plays it out to Quigley again. Quigley now is trying to get a shot off. Plays that inside. Good ball inside. They've worked it in again. Still on the ball. Plenty of Kilkenny runners. That eventually is coming in. Is that going over the bar? The crowd here like that. As that one is knocked over the bar. Looks like it was M. Mulhall who eventually put that one over the bar. It was good work though. Over and back across the field. Kilkenny were patient. And it was Mulhall, her ponytail slightly obscured her number. I'm pretty sure that's a 19, and that was Emma Mulhall with the finish. Seven and a half minutes gone, one point apiece. Dropping down, half followed down there by Laura Green, gives herself a chance. But big tackle came in there from Rachel Harty of Cork, and Cork have managed to win that possession. Now they're going forward again, it's clean, it looks like. And O'Leary plays it out as far as Lucy Allen. Lucy Allen in plenty of time and space. Lucy Allen, she does not need to be asked twice. Lucy Allen composed herself, planted her feet, and struck that between the posts. Good work there from both sides. Both sides getting scores there in the last 60 seconds or so. Two points to one now in favour of Cork. And it's Murphy again who clears that up the field. Huge puck out. She's trying to drop that down on top of Gunner. But the line just wins that little battle over there at the moment. Or was there a touch on it potentially? There must have been because we're going to have an attacking line ball from a Kilkenny perspective that Maria Kennedy is going to take. Maria plays it up the line, half blocked, so it's going to come back to her again. Now Maria takes advantage of that quick thinking out of her. As she plays that, charges up the grip and the hurling, plays it across the field, batted down now. It looks like Cork just had the numbers there again and they've got onto that, pulling and doing everything they can just to make it difficult for their opponent. That one is squeezing out, Rachel Harty trying to get onto that, but Quigley is also there for Kilkenny. Harty looks like she might have it. She's trying to get out, hand passed up, just not letting that out. And Quigley has it again. Quigley has two players on her. The referee eventually decides there's a foul there. It's going to be free in inside the 45, and this one looks scorable. 
good work there by Daniel Quigley, the O'Loughlin Gales player. Won an All-Ireland Intermediate back in 2021, 20, the last time Kilkenny won, won at this level. Now she's about to take the free that she won herself. Just inside the 45. In fact, it's Daniel Morrissey who's taken that one. And Morrissey does well with that one. It was... A fairly straightforward one, and she made it look very, very straightforward as she knocks that one over the bar for her first score of the day. Two points apiece, nine and a half minutes gone. There, it's batted down, batted down there by Katie Byrne. Katie Byrne doesn't manage to control the first time, but she gets it on the second attempt. Now she's coming across the field. She was well marked there by O'Leary, who tried to just block her. She did well. Now back as far as Daniel Quigley. Quigley feeds that back as far as Feeling. Now Feeling, Todd, but where she was going to play that. Has she managed to pull it off? She nearly did. It was good Cork defending back there by Neve O'Leary. Now Neve O'Leary gets onto that, sends all the Cork forwards the wrong way with that lovely little sidestep there, and she plays it down to acres of space here. Canopy control, just too much maybe on that one for Doyle, but Doyle gets it on the second attempt. Now she's on her bike. She plays it back outside. She has a bit of support outside, and there is a chance for Cork to build on this. They do love to run when they get a bit of space. That one is thrown there into the corner by Rose Murphy. Rose gives it in as far as Lucy Allen. Lucy Allen looking for a second score of the game. Has she got it? The umpires like that. The crowd here like that. That's over the bar. And that was a very, very good score. Lucy Allen with two now to her name. Cork with three overall. The other Cork score coming from a free for Lauren Home and Kilkenny on the other side. Dave Danielle Marcy got a free a couple of minutes ago. And M. Mulhall got their other score. Again, that one is dropping four, five, six players. Watch that. He was batted down, but not clean possession. One just yet. It's still there. Rachel Harty is involved in that again. Again, players come in on top of her. It's still stuck in the ground. The pitch is in great condition here, but it just won't come up for either player. Players throwing in their boots, and eventually, Ellen Gunner, Ellen Gunner wins that one and just puts everything she has behind that and drops it in around the house. There might be danger here. Click any around to this. They've gone to ground. It's Small Hall again. Small Hall has gone to ground. She still has the ball. She's back up again. She's trying to get a shot away. She does eventually get a shot away. It's a low, a tricky one. It's well saved and clear on the second occasion. Not really well cleared though it's as far as Maria Kennedy Maria Kennedy she's half blocked and she, the, she takes the shot but it goes to the left and wide there was danger there though massive amount of danger Stephanie De Boussang did really well though because it was kind of a, a grubber kick to use rugby parlance there it just came in and was slippery and slimy as it came into her but she did well got her body behind it saved it and the score remains 3 points to 2 in favour of Cork so we're just paused here as one of the Cork players ties her laces Mike Ryan, the Tipperary match official, decided to give her a chance and now Cork have gone short with their puck out. They've knocked it up there as far as Ashley Maloney. Ashley Maloney now has it. Ashley still has it. She's been held there. The referee has given her the free. He's given her the advantage, in fact, and now he's going to go back and give her the free. So a free out for Cork inside their own 45. It's taken very quickly because there's a kick. Any player out there with helmet issues, the referee didn't see that and now the ball has been played down. Now he looks like Rose Murphy over there in the far side of the field has been done for travelling. I think we saw the same player being pulled for the same foul last week as well. A player of her pace, you can see why every time she gets the ball she has one plan and that is to bear down and goal. Now Hannah Scott, the Kilkenny captain, to take this one. Full forward back in 2021 when Kilkenny won that intermediate all and she drops that one in around. Oh, well taken, just wasn't held up. And now Kilkenny are quick to react onto that. Morrissey, Daniel Morrissey, she's going down and goes. She takes a shot out. Angle wasn't that easy, but she made it look quite easy as she shortened up the grip in the hurley and put that over the bar for number two for her for the day. Her first from play. Good work from Morrissey there to finish that and just really quick reactions as it looked like Cork had possession of the ball, but she came in on top of that, grabbed it, ran through and put it over the bar. Short puck out now from Cork. That one's worked up to the 45. There is a bit of time and space to maybe take a step back. And that's put across. And again, Kilkenny have intercepted. There's Maria Kennedy who's done well. But Cork haven't given up on that. And it's Rachel Hart who's back up to clean up that little bit of a mess. And she comes out and she cleaves that. Look at the space down here. All the Cork players have come out. And there's plenty of space for Kilkenny to run into. Looks like Roisin Feeling is going to come out and take it. She took a big tackle there and lost her hurley. In fact, that was Jenny O'D. Jenny O'D was brave there. Came out. Took the shoulder. Won her side of free. And just gives them a chance to calm things down maybe and launch another attack from back here. So across to take this one is Hannah Scott, the James Stevens player. Won all Ireland Intermediate, of course, with the club last year. Uh, Leinster Intermediate, I should say, with the club last year beating in the all Ireland final. So here goes Hannah Scott throws it up for herself, steals a couple of extra yards and then launches that in around the 21 it's dropping, who's it going to drop, that's pinballing around but look who comes away with that, it's Rachel Harty again Rachel is going, Rachel is coming down the line the ball is on the stick as she comes down the line please that up as far as O'Leary, O'Leary doesn't manage to get that first time, it's just about still in front of us the sideline officials are taking a long look at that now eventually they decided it has gone out of play 
hard to see who that came off last but he has decided it's come off a car player and it's going to be a line ball to Kilkenny and their number five Katie Byrne All-Ireland minor winner back in 2021 She's told just to drive it up here. Nothing fancy from the Kilkenny player. She makes a lovely connection on that, but it's straight to a car player. And from her point of view, it's set up nicely for that one. Is brick flick clear, and it's still go. Kilkenny have picked it up again through Morrissey. Morrissey was spun around, and she's won her side of free. And maybe it's just on the edge of the scoring zone. We'll see in a couple of seconds who's going to come across and take this one. And was there a yellow card? Hard to see from here, but we're going to go back for a free anyway. And it's going to be Danielle Marcy scored her last one. This one is a lot more difficult. But it looks like she fancies it. She's just checking the breeze, and the breeze is probably with her, whatever little bit of it is there. That can be sometimes be an advantage as much as a disadvantage, but she's going to attempt it, it looks like. Anyway, plenty of players waiting in around the square for this one to drop. Here goes Marcy. Goes low with that one. Dropping there. It looks like Kilkenny might have it, though. Have they picked up the second ball? It's still there. Kennedy is in on top of that as well. She's not letting her player out, but eventually out comes Doyle. Doyle comes out and that. She gives it as far as Maloney. Maloney then clears it up the line, but it's well taken out there again. Cork look lively when they do get the ball down towards her forward. Oh, Leary just couldn't control that. Can he send that back down to where it came from? It's dropping in around the house. Rachel Hartley looks like she got that note. She got the call to leave it. She left it on to O'Sullivan, and O'Sullivan clears that down the line. Down as far as Rose Murphy. Rose Murphy is beaten to that one. Rose Murphy is still trying to put in a big tackle there, but a cross came cast. Cast it really well there. She was brilliant the last day out as well as she won that one. Now Kilkenny are on the march, but they just don't have the numbers up there. Cork have plenty of numbers back there to just mop things up, and it's Maloney again. How many times have we mentioned her name in this opening 10 minutes or 15 minutes or so? She has been immense so far as that one goes up to Lucy Allen. Lucy Allen plays that down the line. There is a bit of space on the far side of the field. Can Cork work something from there? It's Dooley now on the ball. She, she tries to go past her player. It looks like she's lost her hurley. Forced to hand pass that back outside as far as Holman now. Holman loses possession of the ball. Kilkenny say thank you very much for that as Kennedy picks that one up and plays it back down inside. She was looking for Mulhall. Mulhall doesn't get it. It's still there though. And Cork are onto it again. Intelligent play, but Kilkenny aren't giving up on this one. It's still there. It's won back by Mulhall again. Mulhall has it. Ball on stick. She has a point already in this game as she plays that up the line. Oh, doesn't manage to get that. And just does ball doesn't go to hand and it's eventually cleared out the line by... O'Sullivan, O'Sullivan, that's bounced on the 45, well taken there, that was a slippery one, but great hands there from Kilkenny perspective, as Neve Lee, he picked that one up, didn't let it go past her, good hands there, great hand work up as far as Quigley now, Danielle Quigley's on her bike as she plays that down, Sharns up to the grip and the hurley, wasn't the best ball in the world, she was trying to play it inside, just doesn't manage to get it inside, and Cork have turned it over again. It's Doyle. Doyle plays that into a bit of space in as far as Holman now. Holman plays that down to the far side of the field. Both players really go for that one. But it's the Cork one who has it on this occasion. She plays that out as far as Avril Cashman. Cashman now plays it in as far as Murphy. Murphy has a bit of space in front of her. She's going towards the goal. She goes on to her left hand side. She opens up. She shoots and she scores. Rose Murphy there on the end of that move which went through four or five Cork players eventually ended up with Murphy she showed a bit of pace a bit of skill a bit of ingenuity as she went through there and put that over the crossbar. Four points to three now in favour of Cork. 17 minutes and 20 seconds gone here in this very National Camogie League Division 2B final replay. Murphy, oh that's not a good ball, it's straight to Lucy Allen, Lucy Allen on the second attempt gets that, she gives it on to her captain Harty. now here goes Harty. she's over to 45, she still has it, she's bearing down and going, here goes Harty. she's going for it, not an easy angle, and it was never going to be easy, and by my reckoning that's Cork's third wide, that wasn't easy. Harty's adrenaline was up as she's gone through two or three tackles and just said, I'll have a go at this, who knows what could happen. But it was always going to be difficult and eventually it does go to the left and wide. Lucy Allen again is taking up that centre field Burt trying to pick up one like she did the last time. But it's the, re- the goalkeeper for Kilkenny, Clean and Murphy, decides to go in a different direction. But Cork win it again, it's the other midfielder this time. Harty has it, Harty has it, ball on stick. The referee, big tackle coming in there, the referee says no, play on. The Cork crowd here do not like that one. But the referee is the man who makes the decision and Mike Ryan at Tipperary says, no, that's no foul. Rachel Harty is slow to get up to her feet. Strong physical player is Harty though. Played soccer with Cork City. She's in the UEFA B licence holder, of course. And she will take more than that to put her out of the game. But it was a big tackle. The referee says a fair one on this occasion and Kilkenny now have possession of the ball, line ball there by Byrne. Byrne goes back four or five yards. I don't think Roisin Fielding was expecting that. Feeling is under a bit of pressure now, but she goes one way then the other and clears that down the line. And that's going to drop around to 45. Well picked up to Cork. Saw that all day long and put back down to where it came from. Daniel Quigley is onto that. So too is Lucy Allen. It looks like it's going to be Quigley who has it now. She does the old roll lift, gets it back up. 
good use of the roll lift there from Quigley as she plays it out as far as green. Too many steps there, like in fairness to the referee, he has been on top of that all day long. And it's going to be a free in now to Cork. And a chance for them to go too clear. And the referee is going to stop the clock there. So I think it's Rachel Harty is down in front of us here. She's been through the wars in the last few minutes. A huge player for Cork. They really want her to get back up to full fitness. But we'll take a lot to put her out of the game. She was player of the match, of course, in the drawn game last week. So Rachel still receiving a bit of attention. She's just giving her all the attention she deserves there. Kilkenny looking back on their record last year they didn't make it out of the group stage in the league or the championship so they've already gone better than that this year and we're hoping to take away some silverware Cork from the other point of view as you mentioned made it all the way to the All-Ireland final last year where they were beaten by two points by Galway hoping again to go one step further but the team as we heard from Trevor Coleman their manager has changed drastically from last year 18 of the team moved on up to the senior or left or went travelling for different reasons so the panel is much changed but here goes Kleena O'Leary. Can she convert this one just outside the 45? Yet to score today. She's going through her technique. Slightly unorthodox technique. But if it works, it works. That's all she cares about. And the crowd here seems to like that. It does work. And she'll keep doing that technique all day long. As she's able to convert that. A good score from her. From just outside the 45. And now 5-3 in favour of Cork. 20 minutes gone. Murphy now. Again, taking her time with her puck outs, waiting for a runner, waiting for something to happen in front of her that she can target. She's going to target this down on top of Murray Kennedy. Kennedy bats that one down and it's well picked up there. And Kilkenny have a chance to work something from here as that's played down the line. It looks like Kilkenny players have this. They're out being pushed out, pushed out by the silent. Good work there. Cork managed to turn that over. Possibly Neve O'Leary has done enough to Cork full back and she has, as her side have won a line ball here down in the corner. Decent crowd here in the rag filling up the stand. There was weather forecast and monsoons we were expecting coming down here that hasn't materialised just yet thank God but they all moved into the stand just to be just to be cognisant of that and now Cork have their line ball down inside their own 21 yard line good height on that one that was a great connection up as far as Allen now Lucy Allen but again rushing feelings all over not letting Allen get that easy brilliant block there coming in from feeling they're having a great duel out there feeling and Allen now who has it this time it looks like Quigley has it she plays that back outside back outside as far as Green now it's Roisin Feeling now. Roisin Feeling her, was half blocked there with that one as she tried to stick past that up the line. And now it's going to be another line ball to Kilkenny and a chance for them to build an attack just there on the 45. It's Daniel Morrissey, two points already in this game. One from a free and one from play. She has her own and Roisin Feeling come up beside her. She goes for Roisin. Roisin has it. She gives it back to her. Now Quigley has it again in a bit of space. A big tackle come in there. They manage to feed it back outside as far as Kennedy. Kennedy shovels that one inside. It's there. There is a bit of danger. It was well cleared out there by O'Sullivan. But Kilkenny are still on this. Can they get a shot away? The referee says no. It's going to be a free in. Good hard work there by the Kilkenny forwards. It looked like it was Caroline Kennedy who was eventually brought to the ground there. And this should be a very scorable free for them. You'd imagine Daniel Marcy will come across and take this and make it just a one-point game again. Both teams having their purple patches, but from a possession point of view, it feels like Kilkenny have more of it. But it's Cork who have been more economical with it, much like the last day out here. Goes quickly again. She goes relatively low at that, but she goes accurate and she knocks it over the bar. That's number three for her. She got four the last day, which she's already got three today. And there's only 22 minutes gone. So it's the Busang now of Cork. She again puts that one high into the sky. Four or five players watch that. Lucy Allen was onto that, but it's eventually picked up by Byrne. Byrne plays it on, and look who's coming out. Only the team captain, Hannah Scott. Hannah Scott plays it inside. It's two on three, but Kilkenny players might get onto this. Is that Mulhall again who's trying to get onto this? Looked like it was. Fed outside there. And now there's a chance Cork come out through Doyle. Doyle plays that one and again looks like Cork players. Oh, big tackle coming in there. The referee says play on. As it looked like, was it Dooley went to ground there. She received a big tackle. But it's won back there by Harty. Rachel Harty stick went in there from Quigley. Still Harty is onto this. She's pushed. She's gone to ground. And it's going to be another free. A free in just inside the 45. Maybe five or six yards in from the sideline as well. Not an easy one. But they're going to have a fair go with it. You imagine it's going to be clean. O'Leary is going to come across and take this one again. It's not, in fact, they're going to mix up the free takers again. It's going to be Lauren Holman who's going to take this one, it looks like. 
Again, not an easy one for her. She's already scored when she got the opening score of this game. So trying to slither there, trying to make it some bit easier for herself, some bit of a grip on the Hurley when she makes the connection. But this is not an easy one for her. What have we? 24 minutes gone here. This would push their lead back out to two. There goes the St. Vincent's player. She goes down on this one. She looked pretty confident. She struck that. Is it going to come in? It looks like it is. It's just had just enough power on it. She judged that to perfection as she puts it over the bar for number two for her. She really showed real confidence to take that on and then just judge the perfection. Six points to four now in favour of Cork. So Murphy now. Cleaner Murphy off Kilkenny again. Again, both goalies dropping it into a similar area, and that's dropping it. It's bounced through. Everyone has picked up there really well by Gunner. Gunner is onto that. She plays it into a bit of space. It was going to be well read by the Boosang in the car goal. She had the confidence to come out and just mop things up there. The ball isn't brilliant, though. It's dropped straight to a Kilkenny player, and they have a chance to get a score here. That looks like it was Laura Green. Laura Green. Laura Green looks up. Again, does not need to be asked twice. And she took that one on and knocked it over. One in the draw, and now one in the replay for her. Five minutes of normal time left. In this first half, we will probably have a little bit added on as Rachel Harty received a bit of attention. That was a move that was well cut out there from a Kilkenny point of view. Lucy Allen had come out, tried to make contact with the Boosang, sent send it over to me, but it was well spotted and well cut out over there. It looked like by Murray Kennedy, who just followed that whole way over and knocked it out. And now they've got themselves a line ball, Danielle Morrissey, here on this near side of the field. Again, lovely connection. The crowd really like that one. That's dropping. Oh, that's got all the way in and gone to the left and wide. And what a spectacle that would have been if it had just gone over the bar. In Camogie, of course, there were two points. Aren't they pretty sure there were two points if you get a sideline straight over the crossbar? That would have been absolutely unbelievable to have seen here. And who knows what Daniel Quigley or Daniel Marcy can do later in this game if they keep giving opportunities like that. But as yet, the score remains six points to five, 26 minutes gone. Leanne O'Sullivan now with the line ball. Again, good height on that one, but it's not accurate. It's dropped straight into the hands of Katie Byrne. Katie Byrne then plays that inside. She was trying to get it inside there as far as Dohany. Dohany doesn't get it, but though Caroline Kennedy does. She comes out, she's brought to ground, and it's going to be free in just on that 45. And it looks like Daniel Marcy again is going to take this one. Three to her name. Her confidence would have to be up, even though her last line ball did go to the left and wide. It was very, very close, and not something you see very often in Camogie very central again to make this all square coming into the last three minutes of this first half Marcy has that one and no bother at all to her. it's her number four for her she's equal to what she got the last day out three frees and one from play the exact same thing she got the last day out in fact and it's that one dropping. It is a hand went up, but it's not one. Hannah Scott has a right on that, but she's not going to make it. As her Kilkenny colleague comes across and picks that one up. Oh, she's half hooked and looked like Clean O'Leary is first to react to that. She's not. It's the other number 12, Danielle Morrissey, who picks it up in the end and she goes back outside. And now Kilkenny clear again. It's been all Kilkenny for the last five or six minutes. And Cork will feel they need to get a foothold back into this game. That is dropped as Kilkenny, who still come forward again, is left down there by Gunner. Gunner plays that one down inside. She was looking for Mull Hall, but it was just over here. And now we're going to pause again. And there's a Cork player down. I was following the ball. I didn't quite see what happened there. There was a Cork player down and getting another little bit of attention. So, six points apiece, about two and a half minutes, maybe two minutes, ten seconds of normal time left. There has been a few stoppages, we'll expect probably three or four minutes to be added on at the end of this first half. If you're just joining us, the Cork scores, Lucy Allen has two, Rose Murphy has one, Clean O'Leary has one, Lauren Holman has two. On the Kilkenny's perspective, Laura Green has one, she got the last one there a few minutes ago, He's what I remember there Daniel Morrissey has four three frees and one from play Dahani has one and that is all Kilkenny scores so it looks like it's going to be thrown in now yes it is as you thrown in there deep down inside the Kilkenny attacking zone Maria Kennedy is coming over this what Cork player will join her she eventually makes her way over the ball is thrown in and who's going to win this one Five, six, seven, eight players involved, and Cork come away with that one, and that is cleared off down the line. Look at again for Lucy Allen. Lucy Allen is again well marshaled by Roisin Field, and Roisin is quickest to react to that. 
use good skill there to just push off her player and get to that one quickly. Again, she was looking for Daniel Quigley. She was looking for Daniel Marcy. Either the Daniels she was looking for, neither of them was found on that occasion. It's still there. The hurley goes flying. McCork have managed to win it back through Clean O'Leary. Clean O'Leary plays that into a bit of space. A good ball. Now there's space to run into. Here comes Holman. Bearing down a goal. Still Holman. Takes the ball on the stick. Puts it back on the stick. She shoots. Has she scored? Yes, she has. She took that ball up from maybe 40 yards out. She had one thing on her mind. Went straight for goals and converted. Number three from her. Her first one from play. And she worked hard for that one and got her award. 30 seconds of normal time left in this first half. Again, it's not one cleanly over near the far side of the field. But the Lions man has decided it's going to go kill Kenny's way. And there's going to be only one minute added on, which is a slight surprise considering the few stoppages we had. Either way, that is a decision that has been made. We're going to have one minute. And we've about ten seconds of normal time. One minute then to play after that. As Kilkenny takes the line ball on the far side of the field. Hannah Scott to take this one. Hannah puts that one up the line. It's tight, but it's staying in. It's well kept in. I think it's Quigley who has that in the far side of the field. She plays that one across. It's dropping. She was trying to drop it in as far as Caroline Kennedy. Caroline doesn't get it, but it's still there for Kenny. A bit of a push there. The referee says no. Play on. And Cork take that little bit of, I suppose, opportunism from their point of view to get the ball out. They've worked it up again as far as home, and she's on to it, driving down the line. Three Kilkenny players on her back as she gets that. She's eventually gone to ground. The referee again says play on. Maybe he's just trying to maybe balance things up from a couple of seconds ago. No, we're going to go back. And there's a chop coming in there. He let play go on as much as he could. The referee has decided it's going, we're going to go back, though. Small bit confusing here who the free is going to be to. It looks like it's going to be to Kilkenny. And it's going to be Hannah Scott who's going to take it. We've gone 50 seconds into the one minute that's due to be added on so this is going to be the last play of the game how long will the referee play how long will he let the play develop once Hannah Scott takes this one he puts that one in she puts it into the danger zone it's dropping it's bouncing where's it going to go it looks like Cork have the numbers over there and they're going to manage to get out of danger here running themselves out of danger Clean O'Leary's called for it but she her colleague was hooked as she was about to play it out to Clean O'Leary still there now it's still on the ground bit of bunching going on the referee's taking a long look at this he said he has decided yeah I've seen enough Seven points to six in favour of Cork from that first half. Hard to sum up that first half, really, I suppose. Both sides had their partial patches. They came, they went, they came, they went. Kilkenny probably have had more possession. When they look up at the scoreboard, they'll see they're a point down. Cork have just been really economical with that one. Just we'll recap the Cork scores there just before we take a break for half time. Rose Murphy has won. Their whole half forward line has contributed to the scoreboard. Rose Murphy has won. Lucy Allen has two. And Clean O'Leary has won as well. That coming from a free. Then Lauren Holman has the other three for Cork. Looking then over at the Kilkenny point of view, we've Danielle Morrissey with four. We have Claire Doheny with one, Laura Green with one as well. So they're to score six points to seven here in the rag. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with full coverage of the second half very shortly
Welcome back to the rag here, just outside Torres Tipperary Camogie home ground for this 2023 very National Camogie League Division 2B final replay. Half time score Cork 7 points, Kilkenny 6 points. Kilkenny are back out on the field with the last, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds or so. Don't see any changes just yet. Cork players still, they both went into the dressing room in fairness, to try and get out of the elements. There, as we mentioned a few times, the rain hasn't come or hasn't come to the extent that we were expecting. So please, God, I'll hold off for the next half an hour or so. Kilkenny are out, as we said. Cork yet to come out. Just looking at the role of honour from a Cork perspective, they've won six Division 2B titles, their last one coming, or six Division 2 titles, I should say more correctly, their last coming in 2018, and their last all Ireland Intermediate was back in the same year of 2018. Kilkenny then looking at that, they have two all Ireland Intermediate titles as well, their last coming back in 2016. Division 2 title, their last one was in 2006, so we're going back a long way for that one. The referee here is getting a little bit impatient. Maybe he's getting a little bit cold. Maybe he's getting a little bit wet. But Mike Ryan of Tipperary has blown the whistle a few times to try and get the Cork girls to come back out again. They're still in the dressing room. Trevor Coleman obviously having a last few words with his side, trying to get him G'd up for this last 30 minutes or so to try and win a national title here in Tipperary. The Kilkenny girls won't appreciate that. It's a few of them down there looking particularly cold. Daniel Quigley is trying to keep herself warm now. Just hopping the ball over and back. But we're still waiting for Cork to come out here on this one. Again, just to run through the scores, Danielle Morrissey is the lead scorer for Kilkenny. She has four. She has three from freeze and one from play. I may have credited Emma Mull Hall with one score there for Kilkenny, but haven't looked back at some of the footage there. It looks like it was actually Claire Doheny who got that one. As we talked about, her ponytail just slightly obscured the number, but Claire Doheny was the one who got that score. And Mulhall yet to score, but she has a full half to go in front of us. And now Cork have just come out. And from Kilkenny perspective, the scores, Rose Murphy has won. Lucy Allen has two. Clean O'Leary has one from a free. And then Lauren Homan has three as well. One from play, two from freeze. And Cork are out again. They run straight into position. It doesn't look like there's any changes just yet. We're trying to keep an eye out for things. I don't see any changes just yet, though. They're still there. They're still around. No changes just yet on the side. Kilkenny back in possession of the ball from the throw on. They're trying to start this second half with a bit of a flourish. But Cork have managed to turn that one over. They've worked it over and back. Still on the ball there. Kilkenny look like they may have it at this stage. Yes, they have it. Looks like it's Maria Kennedy who has it. She just managed to get herself out of a tackle. And now it's laid on. Now it's in as far as Caroline Kennedy. Caroline looks around. Good play from her. She gives it to Donny. Donny Bear now to go. Donny's shot. Well saved. A well struck shot and a fine save there by Stephanie de Boosang. She stood up strong. And stopped that one, crash into the back of the net. But Kilkenny still have the ball. And they'll be hoping to work a score for this one. As this one is played back. Again, she was looking for Kennedy. Kennedy doesn't get into the first of them. Has she got into the second? No, she hasn't. But Kilkenny have got the ball. And they still have a chance of getting a score out of this. They've been very patient. As that one works back as far as Gunner. Now Gunner takes a shot. And that one has gone to the left and wide. And Kilkenny will not be happy with how that went. They could have had a goal at one stage. They would have settled for a point. But eventually, they come away with absolutely nothing. And the score remains 7 points to 6. So it's going to be Stephanie de Boussang again who's going to have this one. And as we mentioned at the start of the programme, we're delighted the way the Kilkenny Camogie players have that black square in the back of the jerseys, not like their male counterparts. And just another a man, a gent, elderly gentleman, just come up to me there a minute ago, wants to commend the Camogie Association on taking cash at the gate to come into this game. It's a great to see, and he was very happy with that, and says a lot of people like him. And now Kilkenny come on the attack again, as that one worked down as far as Hannah Scott. Hannah Scott plays that over the 45, it bounces, but Kilkenny have managed to get it on the second attempt. Dohany, Dohany plays it on as far as Morrissey. Morrissey's goal for goal. Morrissey was a high tackle come in there. The referee says it was fair, though, and Cork have managed to get the ball back from what could have been a dangerous situation. It's not clear brilliantly. He comes back outside, he's going to be shot in again by Dohany. Dohany was on one foot as she struck that, and she gets number two for herself for the day. She was very alert and agile. We may have taken a point her off her in that first half, but she made well and truly no doubt about it on this occasion. She's got two now. Claire Dohany. Quick puck out taken there as far as ring. Donny was in on top of her again. Donny may have even injured herself on that one. But Cork have worked it back outside. And that was cleared by Ashley Maloney. Ashley Maloney for the first time in this game gets a chance. Or the first time in the second half to clear her lines. And she does well with that. And Cork have worked it back there as far as Holman now. Holman goes back across the field. Almost too much on that pass. 
for Rose Murphy. But Rose Murphy gets it on the same. Now here comes Rose on the 45. Rose on her left hand side. She looks up at the post. She takes her shot and she gets her score. Number two for Rose for the day. She had one in the first half and one in the second half now. 32 coming up on 33 minutes gone. Eight points to seven in favour of Cork. That one is bouncing again. And who's going to get on to this again? It looks like Kilkenny have managed to win this. The intensity of the second half has really risen in the last few minutes. That one goes as far as Kennedy. Now Caroline Kennedy. Kilkenny have the free if they want it. Kennedy doesn't want the free. She wants to get the score herself. Has she got it? Yes, she has. Caroline Kennedy picked that one up quickly. She knew she had the advantage. So the free shot maybe took the pressure off her. But it was well finished. And that's her first score. And we look over the scoreboard again. Eight points apiece. Three minutes gone in this second half of this National League final. There is silverware on the line. And both players, sets of players know that. And they want to go home with that cup. Dropping again there. And it's Kilkenny who have that, trying to work it. Rachel Harty is on this. Rachel Harty doesn't give up on that one. And she's got it to dig that one out. She's digging up there as far as Doyle now. Doyle has O'Leary on her shoulder. O'Leary is still there. And again, a tackle comes in there by Neve Lee. Neve does really well. Doesn't let that one go past her. But she at the expense of a line ball. And it's going to be Rachel Harty now to take the line ball. Plenty of vocals coming from the sideline there. Harty puts that one across the field. And it looks like it's going to be Dooley who has it for Cork. Dooley got the goal. The last day out for Cork. She's going forward again. There is a high tackle in there. The referees just play on though. And Kilkenny managed to get away with that just about. It's there. It squirts out. Who's going to pick up on it now? It looks like Holman was trying to get onto that. But Laura Green came out in front of her. And Laura Green managed to get onto that one. And now she plays that down. Possible hand on the back there. But Cork managed to come away with it regardless as it comes out as far as O'Sullivan now. Leanne O'Sullivan plays that one in. One handed inside. Who's going to get onto it inside there? Is Dooley going to make it for Cork? Is there going to be a couple of Kilkenny players converging in on her? It's O'Callaghan now. Clean O'Callaghan. She comes back outside. Back as far as Lucy Allen now. Lucy has been closed down by two Kilkenny players. And between the two of them, they managed to turn her over. And the ball is cleared back out the field again. Not a huge distance on that clearance though. As it's dropping again. And Kilkenny have managed to work it back again. There's maybe a hand been held there or something. Either way, the ball went to ground. And it looks like it's now Rachel Harty again. Rachel Harty on the 45. She plays that one in. Has it got the length? Yes, it has. Rachel Harty just came out of a mass of players. Got herself a little chink of light and put it over the crossbar. Her opening score today. Five minutes into this second half. And you can really ten- sense how both sets of players have lifted it in this second half. The first half maybe started off pretty well and finished maybe slightly with less energy than we've seen here in the opening five minutes of this second half. Yet to be won now, it's still on the ground. It's Kilkenny who've managed to pick that one up. And they try to drive forward to try and play down as far as Daniel Quigley. Daniel Quigley doesn't get it though. It's eventually picked up by Doyle. Laura Doyle now plays that up. It's not an Acker winner, is it? It looks like it might have worked out. It looks like Kilkenny were going to cut that one out. It doesn't work on this occasion. As that comes across the field, great hands there. Fantastic pair of hands. That one is played inside. Played inside as far as Holman again. Holman spins past her player. Holman shoots. And Holman gets her fourth point of the day. They did everything they could to stop her there. She jinked one way, then the other. Her marker lost her hardly, it looked like, to give Holman a little bit of a extra second or two as she went past her player and knocked it between the posts 8 points to 10 there may be a sub coming here on the Kilkenny side it looks like number 30 Trez Donnelly might be coming onto the field in a few minutes but we'll stick with the play for now as Holman picks it up again Holman plays that one inside into a bit of space oh that was a searching ball where's it going to go in on top of that there is O'Callaghan but out comes the boost out comes Murphy I should say and Murphy does well to clear that out the field possession there just goes to ground again neither side have claimed it but it looks like it might have worked out as far as Harty again she plays that across the field there is a bit of space lovely ball in as far as Lucy Allen Lucy Allen gets it to second the third attempt isn't going to come up for her she's managed to hold off feeling there but she hasn't got the ball just yet still there still Allen trying her best to get onto this the Kenny players are throwing their body into this one not letting the car players get it up and now it has come out of it Lucy Allen eventually has it she started off with that she eventually goes down she'll say she was fouled a couple of times they might say here she fell herself either way it's going to be a free in a free in for Carter they worked hard for and is Hannah Scott going to get a yellow card for that or is it just a talking to he looks like he might be keeping his cards in his pocket on this occasion on the Kilkenny team number 33 Stanley replaces number 19 Emma Mulhall 
So Trey's Donnelly there onto the field for Kilkenny. Emma Mulhall coming off so number 30. Trey's Donnelly makes her way onto the field. Cork winning by two points at this stage and now they have a chance to extend that to three if Lauren Holman, Holman can make it number four for herself today. She's got two from freeze and two from play. Two from the hand and two for the land as they say. Here she goes. Here goes Holman on her right hand side. Has she split the post? Again, no bother to her whatsoever as she casually walks back to her, jogs back to her position. And that's number five. Pushing her side three clear. 38 minutes gone. Murphy now again from Kill Macau again. She's trying to drop this down, but this Kilkenny player here, right in front, what a take. Ah, oh, just looked like Quigley took her eye off it at the very last second. And it's Holman again who's onto it, but she's shut down by Quigley again, who lost the ball in the first place, but she wants to win it back in the second occasion. And now Kennedy has it, Caroline Kennedy has it. She plays that on as far as Morrissey. Turned back over again. Looked like Dowell may have been fouled, or might even go back to Leanne O'Sullivan, who's been fouled. Both of them are on the ground at the moment. O'Sullivan is back up, Doyle is still down. We're going to pause now as they, a couple of players receive a bit of attention. Both Cork Medical backroom staff are onto the field. And Maeve Ring is also getting a bit of attention. So they're all, that whole half back line is involved. They all want to get some bit of attention and maybe stop the game for a couple of seconds. Three points up now. Their side are if they look up at that scoreboard. All the Cork players seem to be okay again. Emma Flanagan was involved in that as well. She looked like she was receiving a bit of attention as well. Laura Doyle is up and it's going to be Maeve Ring now who's going to take this one. All Ireland under 16 winner back in 2019. Here goes Maeve. She's looking around her. There is a lot of space up there in the diagonal left corner as she's looking at it. Is that what she's going to target? That looks to be where that ball is heading into that bit of space. It was closed up as the ball got there, but now Holman is onto it again. Holman dances one way and the other out of space and she gives it back to Rachel Harty. Rachel Harty, they're in a huge amount of power on that one. It had enough with just the accuracy let her down at the last minute, but again, you can see the danger, the threat that Holman possesses. She's picking it up, she's bringing players in on top of her and then she's able to leave it outside. The players were left unmarked like Rachel Harty on that occasion, but this time Rachel put it to the right and wide. Murphy now. Murphy got a call from Laura Green. She didn't hear it on this occasion. Goes to the other side of the field where it looks like Cork have more players over there. One of them is Lucy Allen. Lucy Allen just claws that out of the sky and goes forward. She has a couple of players on her back, so she decides to release it inside. And Cork might have worked that in, but there's a foul there. Referee has given a free into Cork again. As it looked like Dooley was foul there as she was coming out and Holman is going to take this to try and get her sixth of the day just inside the 45, relatively central. Going on what we've seen already, you would expect her to convert this. Car potentially also making another change that we'll talk about in a second. It looks like Isabel Sheehan is going to come onto the field. As Holman does what we ex oh she doesn't in fact the crowd here were clapping and everyone we all thought that was going to be a score but that has gone to the right and wide and that is a bit of a let off from a Kilkenny's perspective as you would have expected to score that considering what we've seen Lauren Holman doing this game already and there is that sub that we talked about a second ago Isabel Sheehan has come onto the field she replaces Avril Cashman of Cork we saw Sheehan come onto the field in that drawn game also so we'll see what she can do for the last 19 minutes or so of this game. That one is dropping again, bouncing, picked up there by Quigley. Quigley has it. She gets her way out of two players. She's still going forward. She's heading down towards that corner flag. She's driving on. Laura Doyle is on her back, but still Quigley has it. Quigley, what a run by Quigley. Can't she get his shot off? Oh, she just seemed to lose her concentration at the last minute. She was trying to convert it from the stick into her hand and put it over the bar. Just didn't go her way on that occasion. Now it's bouncing inside there. Again, Cass is onto that. Cass receives a bit of a shoulder there. It looked like by O'Leary and Cass loses the ball and Cork can manage to turn this one over good ball into space great vision to Holman Holman has been well marshaled though in fairness to her Katie Byrne was on her back Holman has it but Byrne did really well there it looked like Holman was in for another score and it was Roisin Fielding who eventually cleared that one out up the line there as far as Doyle Doyle plays it up again to Lucy Allen who takes that on the hop and plays that inside there could be danger here if Cork can convert something from this they've got the ball inside as far as O'Callaghan O'Callaghan has one thing on her mind she takes the shot and she gets her goal and the crowd here rise to that one as Clean O'Callaghan came out, won the ball, spun blaster player, and finished it to the net. 
and just as that ball hits the net Kilkenny have decided to make the change and bring on Aoife Cantwell she was due to start but she will play the remaining 18 minutes or so and Kilkenny know they need a lift at this stage One eleven to 8 points now in favour of Cork after that fine goal there by Clean O'Callan she was quite enough made by her own standard but we talked about her before she has that goal touch and we saw it there and out comes Caroline Kennedy she knows she needs to drag her side back into this one she plays that down it looks like the ball might win the race out over the line and that is what happens but that is a blow for this Kilkenny side and they'll want to get the next score but Cork will also want to get the next score to really push their advantage and make sure they're not caught in the last 17 minutes or so. So a line ball down in the corner. Not the best connection in the world, but it does look like Rachel Harty went down there. While she fouled, the referee said no. As is Daniel Quigley. Now Quigley has it. Quigley is fouled. It's going to be a free in. A free in in a difficult enough position. But it is an important one. Is it going to be Morrissey? It looks like he's going to take this one now. Morrissey got four points already in this game and this one is probably the most important if she can convert this just to bring her side back into this they conceded a goal a couple of seconds ago they've been under the cosh for the last few minutes nearly since the start of the half so she needs to get this one has she got it? it looks to be heading between the post the umpire go to the white flag eventually they put it over good score and an important score from Morrissey and she'll be hoping that'll give her side a bit of a confidence boost kind of rise him again and play up the last 15 or so minutes in this game. So Stephanie de Boussang who made that great save from that goal chance at the opening couple of minutes of this second half. She plays it on, but it's going to be picked up by Laura Green. Laura Green is dispossessed by Harty now. Harty goes to ground over. She's fouled, says the referee. She was happy enough to keep playing on, in fact. But the referee says, no, we're going to come back and it's going to be a free in. And it's going to be Clean O'Leary to take this one. Again, fairly central, but... That's the 65 line just behind her. So what are we saying? Maybe 63, 62 yards out. She's taken a couple of little steps forward since I said that. So we'll maybe go 62 and a half metres out in front of the goals. 15 minutes left in this very National Camogie League Division 2B final replay. She's not happy with how far back the Kilkenny player is trying to block her. Hopefully that hasn't put her off. So here goes O'Leary again. Four points the last day out. One point today so far. She goes with that one. The crowd went very quiet for her, almost Tom and Park style as she puts that one right between the posts. Clean O'Leary. She might have been put off by the Kilkenny player in front of her. After she dealt with that, she shook it off and put it straight over the bar. 1 12 to 9 points. That's 15 points to 9 in favour of Cork. As Lena Murphy again takes the ball in her hand. She goes to her right hand side. There's a bit of movement over there. Caroline Kennedy seems to be the target for this one. It bounces, it bounces too far. Dahani was trying to get onto that. She didn't go into her hand, but now it's to Laura Green. Green has it. Is she pulled? She may have been. The referee's has play on though. He's right in front of that. He's a good view. As it was Hannah Scott, I think, who played that one in, in as far as Ellen Gunner. Ellen Gunner has it now. There's a player in her back, and that player was O'Leary. O'Leary seemed to turn her over there. Did really well. The referee is like, it's going to be a free out. The Kenny Crowd don't like that one. But Neve O'Leary was behind it. Didn't let Gunner go past her. And now it's a free out. And again, the chance gone a begging from a Kenny perspective. Cork will be delighted how that exchange worked out. The Boo Sang now, the former Cork captain, of course. Again, not a huge amount of movement in front of her. We mentioned the start of the second half, the intensity was through the roof. It's slightly tailed off in the last couple of minutes, maybe, since Cork got that goal through Clean O'Callaghan. So here goes the Boo Sang again. Again, decent distance on that. It's going to drop there onto a few players, but no one picks it up. Initially, it's still there. Again, it's Rachel Hardy who comes away with it. There was a chop. You could hear it from the stand here. The referee had no option but to give the free there. Maybe could have played the advantage. Rachel Hardy was away with the ball, but either way, we're going to go back. And it's another chance for Clean O'Leary. We saw, saw her score one from maybe slightly farther out, but more central a few minutes ago. But you'd have to feel her confidence is up, of course. It was Clean who levelled the game in the last minute in Clonmel last week to bring this to this replay. So she's well able to score from this distance again the crowd here almost hush to give her the respect she deserves as she takes this one going through her technique she strikes out the right hand side it's high it's accurate has it got it? it is dropping oh it needed a touch there that could have snuck in underneath the crossbar it takes a touch though and by the looks of it it took a touch off a car player as there's not going to be 
a 45 so it's going to be a free out so that really could have went anywhere it was dangerous but we look over the score again 112 to 9 points nothing comes of that and Kilkenny now have a chance can they get the next score they got the last one through Morrissey they'll want to get the next one to keep themselves in the game Cork will want to complete off with it obviously as it's Holman now picks it up again Holman she's half blocked there again still Holman working hard trying to get on the second and the third attempt she's still there eventually the ball has gone out of play it's going to be a line ball both players fighting over who, which team it's going for but it's going to go to Kilkenny it's going to be Katie Byrne that's going to take this the crowd here just trying to G up their team for the last 10 minutes or so so here goes Katie the Dixborough player oh she topped that and gives Cork a chance to come in on top of it again still there running in on top of that there was Flanagan Flanagan was brave there she's gone to the ground she's still fighting for it the ball is still here right in front of our commentary position it's still not one clean he's clear no O'Leary he's trying to get onto that and it's gone out of play again and it's going to be a line ball to Kilkenny the Cork players don't agree with that but it's going to be Daniel Morrissey who's going to take it Morrissey five points in this game already got the last score for Kilkenny here she goes with this one she goes for centre just trying to cause as much havoc in there as she can Kilkenny have got onto this one left it inside Kilkenny still have it there is still a chance on the back foot that one was looked out they're still there that was Donnelly Donnelly plays it inside oh it's easy gobbled up in the end though the Boosang made that look very very easy and clear, clears that one out almost puts too much on it as it's gone out over the line and Kilkenny will have a chance to maybe launch another attack from just outside the 45 Hannah Scott comes up leading by example from the captain she's going to come up and take this one or is she actually going to go back as far as Roisin Fielding she's not I think Roisin Fielding's run was spotted so now we're going to have no choice only go forward with this one nice one oh well worked oh it was almost too well hit and the Kilkenny players couldn't hold it but goes back to Scott again Hannah Scott who has been the forwards in her time knocks that one inside but Neve O'Leary who's been a rock all day in that Cork full back line comes out with that ball again clears it out there as far as O'Sullivan now O'Sullivan's heading towards the sideline but she has the ball doesn't get a huge amount of purchase on that one and she puts it back as far as Morrissey Morrissey from out by the sideline it was always going to be difficult to convert from there and that one goes harmlessly enough wide 1 12 to 9 points to score 50 minutes gone here in this National League final replay up as far as Doyle now Doyle lets that one bounce a few times but she gets it spins past Quigley there as she plays that one up the line it's not an accurate one from her perspective though and it's well ridden there by O'D O'D goes back and that one is played up the line again it's going to bounce she was trying to get that one up to Donnelly again it was over Donnelly's head Kenny will still feel they have the advantage here but they don't as it's Doyle who has it again Doyle is coming out of defence taking too many steps and that is a real present for Kenny at this stage they're free now right on the 45 Will they go for the point? Will they drop it in around the house? One twelve to nine points. There's still plenty of time to go. As it looks like Morrissey is just probably going to take her point here. Just outside the 45. Again, both sides will know this game isn't over till the final whistle. That's what happened in last week's game when it looked like... I suppose it looked like Cork were home and hose at one stage. And then a chance to kill Kenny. And there's another score. And Morrissey gets another one. That's one, two, three, four, five, six for Daniel Morrissey. five points in this game six points for Daniel Morrissey with that last score as that one is dropping bouncing where's it going to go now it looks like there is a bit of space back there for Neve Lee to go down and pick up this one she plays it back as far as Feeling. now Feeling has a bit of space to run into but just as like I say that she slows down but she slows down illegally it's going to be a free out which she takes pretty quickly which she takes illegally also that ball can't be taken out of her hands as she tried to do there maybe you might say she was using a bit of experience and knew this would happen and the referee has that same opinion he decides yeah you took that too quick you knew exactly what you were doing you're trying to slow down the play so I'm giving a throw in instead and that's what he does Mike Ryan, Mikey Ryan there of Tipperary is still there the ball stuck in a big rock trying to come out here into the last 8 minutes or so of this game and we're going to have another sub for Kilkenny looks like Emer Lee is going to come back on or come on I should say she's wearing number 15 she was due to start but Emma Hall, Mahal Hall started in front of her now she's going to come on though for the last 8 minutes or so when she does get a chance but Kilkenny now back in possession of the ball again it's Morrissey Kilkenny's standout player all game just trying to drag her team back into this one 
but on this occasion it doesn't go her way and that's cleared back outside back up to Emma Flanagan Emma Flanagan of course plays that inside she plays it inside as far as O'Callaghan and the goal score O'Callaghan gets it she's a long way from goals though but she's trying to change that now as she comes forward she shoots off her left hand side has she got the score yes she has and what a score that was she hasn't been in the game often but every time she gets the ball she contributes to that scoreboard 1-1 one, one now for Clean O'Callaghan as Emer Lee comes on and Daniel Quigley makes her way off the field so maybe that is the last throw of the dice who knows they have a few more subs if they want them but we have 7 minutes to go here One thirteen to 10 points that's 6 points the Cork lead by at the moment that one is dropping again it's bouncing who's it going to bounce down to it looks like it looked like Cork had it then Kilkenny got it now Kilkenny have it again it looks like Caroline Kennedy has it the ball is on the hurley as she comes towards the goal she's dropped it though the referee is what has he decided that signal I'm not really that familiar I think he said it's a chop actually the way he was running there was hard to see he was almost given the penalty sign which would be quite dangerous to be given that sign this time in the game but either way we're going to go back for a chop and a free a free from Kilkenny which you'd imagine again Morris will take to bring it back to five points again there's three Kilkenny players in around the square there's one two three Cork ones including the goalie and now another Cork player so the Cork players do outnumber the Kilkenny players inside there which at this stage of the game maybe slightly unusual but you'd imagine Morrissey hasn't a thought in her brain about going for a goal she's going for the point and she gets her point and just keeps things going and number 7 for her as we're going to have another change for Kilkenny a boat change on both teams number 19 for Cork's coming onto the field Fiona Nelligan who She got two points the last day out. Great player to be able to bring on. And number 29 for Kilkenny. Number 29, Eve O'Callaghan replaces number 7, Hannah Scott. Sorry, that's number 27, Kira Ryan replaces number 7, Hannah Scott. Number 29, I thought, is, we're hearing a few different things here. 29, Katie McCluskey, I have my programme, so has come onto the field. That is not what the official here has announced. But we go with Katie McCluskey as it's written in the programme. So either way, with about five and a half minutes left here, that's pulled on, pulled on the ground. Still there, still trying to get up. And again, it's Rachel Harty, who always seems to come out of those little rocks with the ball. Plays into O'Callaghan again, who is absolutely flying in the last five or six minutes from car. Again, she's past her player. Again, she's going for a goal. Can she make it? One, two from three plays. Yes, she can. Clean O'Callaghan has really pulled herself into this game in the last few minutes. 1-2 and all her scores have been more or less carbon copies of each other she's out in front of her player she wins the ball she spins him she goes in and she converts drop it again again it's Rachel Harkey who set up that last score and has put in a huge performance here this evening 5 minutes less than 5 minutes to go of normal time 1-14 to 11 points 17 points to 11 line ball on the far side of the field now to Cork Rachel Harty to take that she kind of topped that ball didn't get the distance she would have liked and Kilkenny looked like they may have turned it over but Cork aren't giving up an atom over there in that far side of the field and they've worked it back again it's like Rose Murphy now who has it Rose gives that back outside his fair it's Rachel Harty Rachel Harty then puts that in again it's going to bounce for Holman Holman doesn't get it but look who has got it it's O'Callaghan O'Callaghan again she plays inside now Cork with a chance of a goal maybe if he can get the shot up the shot eventually comes in and it's finished to the back of the net by Fiona Nelligan she's only on the field about 60 seconds but she may have put this game to bed with that strike great finish from her so it's real predatory instincts that she just got onto that and struck it home 2.14 now to 11 points clock ticks past the 56 minute mark there as Kilkenny would be hoping to get another couple of scores for this game it was over they know they have days out in the Leinster Championship and they all are in Championship to come Kilkenny played Dublin the 27-28 of May that weekend of course the Leinster Championship before that as well but they have a free here today and they haven't given up on this game yet Roisin Fila now takes that one they know they need a goal though they have to get a goal at this point as it's knocked inside but again Cork seemed to have just enough numbers there and it's cleared out the referee maybe he thought about that giving a free there he said no as the ball is still there still on the line Donnelly trying to get it up for Kilkenny but it's a Cork player it looks like it was Laura Doyle who comes away with that one again she's been held as she drove out through two or three players she got a belt in the knee potentially or possibly as well there she goes down we're going to have a, a pause she worked hard she was making sure the ball isn't going past her but she paid for it on this occasion 
So we're into the last three minutes of normal time. And Cork are looking good for this one. 2.14 to 11 points. We spoke to Trevor Coleman at the end of the game last week and he was saying how the turnover of players is hard to deal with it but he seems to have done a pretty fine job here as his team looks to be firing on all cinders. As there's another change there, Rose Murphy comes off for Claudia Keane, it looks like he's coming on. Claudia Keane on there for Cork as is number 29, Aoife O'Callaghan. So two changes there for Cork in the last few minutes. Just giving him a taste of playing in a national final. And it looks like Laura Doyle is still down receiving attention. Or Laura Doyle is up, in fact. It's another Cork player who's receiving a bit of attention now. So we're still paused for this one. As Leanne O'Sullivan comes off the field in front of us after giving it her all. And she must be fairly confident. It's her side that will be picking up that cup in a matter of moments' time. And it's the Boosang who's actually come out of the goals to take this one. She's just outside the 45. Again, she's looking to play that into the far corner. You'd look like that's the way her body seems to be angling up for this one. That's where she sent the ball. It's dropping, though. It's going a bit more centre and it's dropping in around the house again. Nelligan was trying to control her. We're going to have two minutes added on at the end of the 60 here. But it's Cork who have placed in the ball. They've worked it out. The man went to board now. He's kind of obscuring her view at the moment. Thankfully, he's put it down on Kilkenny. You've got the ball back. Not a brilliant pass there. It's still there. Clean O'Leary from Cork is trying to get onto that one. It's still on the ground, though. So Kilkenny have worked it out. Half blocked there. The hand pass was half blocked. Doesn't get the distance there with a the light. It's still there. Still to be fought for. And Cork have won it back again. They've won a lot of those 50 50s today, and maybe that's why they're going to come away with the victory today as that one is played back across the field. There is a chance, but it looks like Cork does have the players over there. Ashley Maloney is going to get onto that, but Ashley Maloney is under a bit of pressure. She gives an intelligent pass to Emma Flanagan. Emma Flanagan then goes to the far side of the field, and again it's Nelligan who's come onto the field and has already got a goal. Look at Nelligan go. She's past her player. Still Nelligan. Can she get 1 get 1 one? for herself today can she what she takes the shot she gets her score and that's another fine con contribution from her two points the last day one one today and with about 10 seconds of normal time it looks like Cork are going to make yet another change number 17 there is it Emily O'Donovan another player about to be introduced onto the field Well, Donovan replaces Ashling Maloney for the last two minutes or so of this game. But the result is probably gone beyond all doubt at this stage. 2.15 to 11 points. Cork were disappointed with how things went the last day out. Felt they maybe left the game behind them and they made sure that didn't happen here today. Still not one over in the far side of the field. There's three Kilkenny players involved. There's two Cork players involved. Now they've knocked it back outside. They've worked it back outside. <laughs> the crowd here reacting to the news that they're not allowed to do a pitch invasion at the end. It'll be interesting to see how that actually works out. We'll keep an eye on that. You can enjoy that from the comfort of your own home wherever you're watching it. But the crowd here certainly gave a sarcastic jeer when that announcement went out. Now on the far side of the field is going to be Danielle Quigley. who's going to take this one. And in more comical fashion, the person who made that announcement or not been allowed to get onto the field has quickly made her way away so she can't be seen anymore, which is a fine decision on her part. In fairness, I don't think the crowd like that. Either way, we'll get back to the play here as that ball comes across the field and Cork are onto possession of the ball or have they won it? It's still there. It's still been fought for. And now it again is Cork who get this one. They clear it out to the field, but it looks like something well picked up there by Laura Doyle. Laura Doyle maybe took her eye off it at the very last second. But out back comes Lauren Holman. Lauren Holman, who has been absolutely immense in today's game so far she's lost her footing but she's still there Kilkenny have turned this one back over now it works its way out as far as Cantwell Cantwell plays it inside, is there a chance of a late score from Kilkenny, picked it up by Kilkenny Kilkenny drives her player out of the way and she drives the ball straight between the post and over the bar, Caroline Kennedy was determined to get a score there, did everything she could pushed off her player and struck it over the crossbar and as we have a brief pause in play the player of the match in today's game she finished the game at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points most of them coming in the first half but we will give it to number 15 Lauren Homan of Cork who was brilliant all day long she was fighting for right up to the last second we saw her losing her footing here just in front of us a couple of minutes ago and she is a deserved player of the match here in this 2B 
League final that's dropped inside again there is still danger maybe Kilkenny can put on a last burst in this last couple of minutes as they've worked the ball back inside to Donnelly Donnelly turns can she get her score yes she can and Kilkenny are just trying to put a bit of respectability on the scoreboard at this stage 2.15 to 13 points 62 and a half minutes gone again it's the Boosang with the ball in her hand we're looking around how much more time will the referee play dropping, bouncing Lucy Allen is onto that again she's really quick to pick up those loose balls she plays it into Nelligan again Nelligan though is beaten on this occasion it's going to be Cass who gets back there she's a big sliding tackle Jane Cass did really well there intelligent play got the ball back out gave it as far as Roisin Field now Roisin Field puts that back down inside but it's going to again be picked up by a Cork player that Cork player just can't hold on to that ball that Cork player was Efo Callahan. just bounced off her hand and goes out of play so it's going to be a line ball now to Kilkenny Number 15, Lauren Homan, was the player to match in that game. And congratulations to Cork. And there is the final whistle, the final whistle in that game. To Cork. Cork were immense throughout that game. They deserved their... And there's a bit of a muted sense of, I suppose, celebration at the end of that game. Neither sets of players roaring and shouting have been delighted with that one. But Cork were professional in their approach. The final score, 2-15 to Cork. 13 points to Kilkenny. And Cork were full value for it throughout. Just to recap, looking at the scores there from a Cork perspective. Kleena O'Callaghan in the last few minutes, I suppose, of the second half. In the last quarter of that second half, she really came into her own, scoring 1-2. Looking around her then, of course, Lauren Homan, our player of the match, she finished with five. Kleena O'Leary had two, both coming from freeze. Lucy Allen had two. Rose Murphy had two. Rachel Harty had a point as well as just putting in a huge performance, as you expect from Rachel Harty. They're delighted going forward into the Munster Championship with that now. You see out there Trevor Coleman, the Cork manager, going out congratulating his players, shaking hands with the team officials. He'll be delighted with how this team went. We spoke to Rachel Harty last week and you could tell she wasn't happy with their performance. She felt they really left it behind her and maybe they were lucky to get out of Clonmel with anything at all. Well, they've come here today, they put down a fine performance and they have won. Kilkenny, of course, also... No, there's bigger fish to fry, there's bigger days to come. They may have lost today, but they have their Leinster Championship, they have their All-Ireland Championship to look forward to. Looking at their team, Claire Doheny got two points, Caroline Kennedy got two. Danielle Quigley was probably their starting out player and their top scorer. She finished with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Six of them coming from freeze, but she really never stopped working all day long. She was up and down the field just trying to drag her side back into this game. Laura Green in midfield also got a point. Their backs were... Hannah Scott, of course, never gave up all day, the team captain as well. But it is Cork Day. They got a chance to use four or five subs as well, which gives them a chance to just blood the new players going into the competitions for the rest of this year. We're hoping the presentation of the Cup will take place here any minute now. Rachel Harty of Cork will be the one to collect that Cup. We're hoping to get, and we'll also hope to get a word with Lauren Holman and, and, of course, Trevor Coleman before our broadcast ends this evening. We may actually try to get a word with both of them maybe before the cup presentation, just kind of to see how this is going to work out, if you just want to bear with us. So we're just going to take a quick pause there, and we'll go out and we see, can we speak to the manager or the player of the match, or will we see will the cup presentation take place first? So bear with us for a couple of minutes.
Ladies and gentlemen, okay, ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention for one moment, please? Ladies and gentlemen, girls, have your attention for one moment. Can you come in a little closer? Girls, close. Okay. Now, now, girls, first of all, I'd like to thank our sponsors very for sponsoring the league and today's game, an absolutely fantastic game today from both teams. I know, I know. An absolutely fantastic game today from both teams. I'd like to congratulate both teams on a fantastic final. The skill level was through the roof. Fantastic girls. To Kilkenny, hard luck. It just wasn't your day today, but you will be back. I'm very sure of that. A fantastic group of players. And to Cork, well done and congratulations. First of all, I'd like to try to present the player of the match. And that goes to number 15, Lauren Homan. Congratulations. Now also, I'd like to thank Tipperary Camogie for giving the ground today. The ground is absolutely fantastic condition and well done to Tipperary Camogie. Uh, thank you. And best of luck to both teams in the coming championship. Now I'd like to make the presentation to Cork captain Rachel, Rachel Harty. So I'd just like to say thanks, I suppose, to Tip or the Rag for the facilities today. Like the pitch is immaculate, so it's absolutely unbelievable to play on this surface. So thanks very much to them for the pitch today. I'd like to say thanks to the officials for the, the game. Uh, they did a fantastic job, I think, in refing the match, and just a big thanks to them. Um, thanks to, I don't know who else, <laughs> I'm trying to think, uh, the management for taking us through this journey it's only the start of it now I think so I'm looking forward to the rest of the year but thanks very much for your work so far to Lillian our county board rep she's always with us and driving us on so thanks to Lillian as well and um, to Kilkenny two tough games like so I think they'll really stand to us going forward now to the championship like last week really tough game and again today I don't think the score reflected how tough of a game it was so well done and looking forward to playing you again um, in, the, in the championship um, so that's it yeah thanks very much up court <laughs> Well done. Congratulations. Thank you very Oh, this is live, isn't it? Yeah, it's oh, for perfect. you. <laughs> Joined here by Lauren Homan. Lauren, league champions, how does it feel? Uh, great feeling, great start to the year. Um, we knew last week we didn't put in the shift that we wanted to put in. So worked hard for the remaining, remaining week going forward and uh, obviously paid off on the pitch today. Your own performance, you were covered every blade of grass. Talk to us about that. 
Um, a new position for me, actually. I played kind of corner, full forward last year and the start of this year. Um, played in the le- last week's league final as well. So it was a bit different today, but I enjoyed it, yeah. What do you think that'll do for you now going forward into Munster Championship into the all Ireland Series? It's a good boost. We have four or five weeks now break before we get into the Munster Final. Um, but it's a good kind of good building block for us and we're, we're looking forward to it. What do you think was different between today's game and last week's game? Um, the pitch definitely is one factor. As you can see, the pitch is fucking immaculate. Um, last week it wasn't wasn't what we uh, expected, but yeah, it's like Crow Park here today. The pitch is perfect. <laughs> it's great, yeah. So for the rest, what is the, suppose, the aspiration for this Cork side going forward? Um, obviously we lost the all Ireland final last year by small margins. Um, so the goal this year is to close them margins against Galway this year and hopefully drive on in. Obviously the goal is to win an All-Ireland. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Lauren. Congratulations. You much. If you bear with us for another couple of minutes, we'll try and get Trevor Coleman, the Cork manager. Yeah. Joined here by victorious manager Trevor Coleman. Trevor, league champions, how does that feel? Look, absolutely delighted. To be fair, look, last year we got to a semi final bait by Antrim by a pint, uh, who went up senior in the end. So, uh, look, it's great for these girls. They put the same amount of effort in as senior team. So, uh, to see them win a National League title is absolutely fantastic, and I'm absolutely delighted from. What pleased you most about the performance? I suppose, look, at the performance last week, we knew ourselves and they knew as a team coming up today that we did not perform last week. Look, we weren't left performed by Kilkenny, we always do that. Again, the first half today, Kilkenny dug in and brought us, look, brought us down a bit in the hurling side is things that we want to do. But again, that's Kilkenny and we know what they're about. So in the second half, it was great to see our hurling came to the forefront and we started playing like we know we can play. So this will give the goals great confidence going into the, the championship. What did you do during the week to prepare for it? You seemed like a different team out there, especially, as you said, in that second half. Yeah, look, as I said previously, we had a lot went on last week, okay, within the camp again. Small little things, but look, we, it did take a toll coming into last week's game. This week, we had a clear run in. Everyone was in full health. Everyone was up for it. So that made a huge difference. You can see, especially, look, in a, game, in a team event, if you're psychologically drained going into a game, which I think we were probably last week, maybe probably got them too much up for it. And this week, we just relaxed, did a bit of training, had a bit of fun in training. And look, that's the proof is in the pudding there. It could have it went the other way for us just as fast, you know? Talk to us now about the rest of the season. Well, look, as I said, they're coming over on Tuesday night. That cup will be going into, I won't say a bin, no, because that's disrespectful, but it'll be going away into a cupboard somewhere in the captain's house and it won't be brought back out. Look, we, we have another, um, we have another hurdle on the 21st of May. We have, um, Munster Championship. And again, that's our next hurdle. That's what we'll be aiming for. We have a few challenge matches lined up and then we're into the All Ireland Series a, a week after that. Yes, the league is nice to win, but look, we need to get back to Crow Park hopefully and try and go one better than we did last year. That's our aim and that's our aim since the start of the year. Look, it's going to be hard with a turnover of 18 new players this year but they showed today that they're after bonding they're getting there the work is is done and there's not an awful lot of work to be done brilliant thanks very much for talking to us and congratulations best of luck for the rest of the year yeah. thank you Joined here by the Kilkenny manager, Seamus. How are you feeling after that performance? Yeah, look, we're we're obviously disappointed after uh, the performance we put in last week to to go to a replay. We, we probably felt that last week was was our chance. Uh, at half time, we felt we were in the game. Ten minutes in the second half, we thought we were still in it, but. You know, we had a great goal. There was a great goal chance saved on, on Claire Donny and, and then in fairness to Cork, they were clinical with their two goals. But before that, you know, they, they hit three points we couldn't answer. And, you know, all of a sudden the lead was stretched and we were, we were chasing the game for the, for the last 15 minutes, you know. So, 
you know, we're disappointed now. But look, we'll, you know, it's only April. We have Leinster to get ready for. The All Ireland series is not far around the corner. The panel is hungry. There's girls there still there to to pop their hand to see what they can offer as well. So look, we're going to take a lot from it. Like you know, you, you, these are the days you learn from. You know, like the big picture is. Every team wants to end up in an All-Ireland final in the Bank Holiday weekend in August, and look, that's our, that's still our prerogative for for the rest of the season, you know. So, yeah, what were the main positives? You got a chance to use a good few players, and I suppose having the extra game at this level is always going to stand to you. Well, the positives were was getting another tough game from a you know a well-drilled side, you know, a side that are organised, know how to play the game, you know, well. So we're going to go here today, you know, obviously reviewing the game and just see where exactly we fell down in that period and where they st- where they stood up, you know. And I'm sure any anyone watching the game, they'll be doing the same with me, Cork this year, you know. You can see that they are setting the standard, they set the bar, they use the ball well, they use the, the pitch very well too. I thought, you know, they were well able to use the diagonal ball. The ball went to hand, they were able to find each other, and they were very 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 strong under the brakes I thought also you know but from our side I thought like even to the end you know in the 61st minute 60 minute we hit two points I just kind of showed there's, there's a good character in this group that a lot of teams maybe would just stop and just try to get let the game pass by but they pushed on to still try to get a couple of points so I have to give credit to the girls for that As you mentioned it is still early days what's the rest of the season hold for this Kilkenny side what are you hoping for what's the ambition well, The ambition is now is just to regroup focus on the, the next game which is Leinster against uh, Dublin um, what would be nice there is to you know try to get some silverware um, I would ask because I think you know winning you know winning is a good habit to get like and you know getting the feel of what a trophy feels like is should create a bit of hunger going into the All Ireland series. It's going to be a hard road, you know, if we do get to a Leinster final, it's going to be very competitive. You could end up having, you know, nine games in ten weeks. So we're going to have to really get the panel, you know, well drilled and tuned into that. And as we done the league, we use the panel well. You know, we show that we trust the players. Girls got us through games and we're going to need that over the next couple of weeks, you know. So happy enough. Absolutely. Thanks very much for talking to us. Hard luck again today and best of luck in the future. Yeah, thanks very much, Ari. That's about all we have time for here on the Kmogi stream. Thanks very much for joining us. I've been Paul Jenkins and we hope to see you all again very, very soon.